I feel like you're kind of a representation, like with you getting into acting early in your career, it kind of makes me think about, like, I'm going to bring Bronson up again, where there's like a sort of new model of what you could be as a rapper, where it's like maybe, like the old model is get signed by a record label, that label tries to turn you into a person who can go platinum and sell a fucking million records, and mm -hmm. if you don't get that, then you stay on the shelf. Right. Now it's more like, okay, you could be somebody like a Davies or a Bronson who has just really respectable hardcore content, maintains like a long-term fan base, but then is able to take their brand name and do the acting thing Love stuff. he did the show yeah. you know that kind of thing is is in, in a way that seems like a much more like stable long-term yeah, thing you know what it is because at the drop of a dime you got you got your core fan base that you created with your music so i could always go do that you know what i mean so why not venture off into other things to just you know expand my own brand expand my name it just it just make more sense to me you know what i mean and it 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 creates fans from different lanes. You know what I mean? Like the rap, it, it, it brought the hood. You know what I mean? Like people, when I when I popped with the rap, the hood came. You know what I mean? The acting brought the, the women. You know what I mean? It brought the, the the kids. Like you know what I mean? The the older lady that would have walked right by me, she stopped me. She noticed me. Like so, it's just you know, it's expanding everything. You know what I mean? Just me jumping into these different lanes is making um me more of a household name. You know what I mean? And that was the goal from the jump. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because like Exhibit did pimp my ride right. because he acknowledged that his career basically wasn't working. Like he wasn't selling the amount of music that he was supposed to, blah, blah, blah. So that right. was like what he went to. Mm -hmm. And the old like rap logic was like, you don't do the acting thing because it'll make it so people can't take you serious as a rapper. Mm -hmm. But it feels like with the brand that you're building overall, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Nah, I, um, I, I feel like, cause I watch so many people do it. I watch, I watch Meth do it. I mean, the dude I'm actually portraying, I watched him do it early. Dude, that's true, he did you know it very I mean? early, like, yeah. Nas was in Belly, all of them, that was early, early. Like they all, DMX was the star of that film. And that's when DMX was hot on fire, you know what mm. I mean? So DMX jumped right into the acting. Like when Tupac was top of the charts, he was doing movies. Like it, it just depends on the person, you know what I mean? If they, if, if you already got people that didn't, that believes in your music and you didn't, you got that, you know what I mean? That ain't going nowhere. Actually, you're right. Yeah, that, if you're playing a cool motherfucker in a movie or whatever, yeah. then it doesn't seem like it, a problem. It can't be no cool. You can't, probably just can't be no cool. You know, don't be no cornball, man. You know what I mean? Super Look. gangster rapper, but he gets to the point in his career where it's like, oh, why not play a cop? But could you, you know do that I mean? I at this point in your career? Could you go be a cop on some cop. show? I could play a cop on a show. Right. I could do that. You yeah. Know what I mean, just because it's, it's acting at the end of the day. You know right. what I mean? And that's just, a, I feel like that's something nobody would. Uh, Think of me as like he's the police, like you know what I mean. So I, yeah, I do that on a, on a show. Mm. I do that. Yeah, I could see that working. That would be a, that would be a good one. I could do that. Yeah, cool ass cop. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start coming out to LA and like making connections out here and shit? Because it seems like you've got you know yeah. a, a wide rolodex of right. people that fuck with you out here that you have relationships with. Um, I would say my first first time coming to LA was maybe 2010. Something like that, mm. 10, 11. And then I start coming back heavy, like 13, 14. So since then, I've been back and forth, back and forth. You, know you, I mean? you knew people out here when you first started coming out here, or would you just come out here on something like, I'm going to just meet people and uh, make something happen? I knew a few people before when I first came out here. I knew a couple of people, and then that just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And then me and Nip linked up, and then I met all the people he know. And What year was that? I met Nip and maybe... Um, I want to say 2014. Okay. Where was that at? Yeah. In his parking lot. You, so you went? Yeah, I met him in the parking back lot. Back then, before. Yeah. Now everybody goes there. Yeah. But you were there back Fat, then. Rest in peace, Fats. Fats was in the store. When I went, Nip wasn't even there yet. He called me. Said, I'm, in, I'm in traffic, cuz. I'll be there in a minute. That's the first time I met him, right in that parking lot. Really? Or, and then you guys just stayed in touch and made music together. We just, yeah, we just... You know how sometimes you link with people and you just, like, catch that vibe, like, beyond what y'all actually do? You know what I'm saying? Like, he was cool, man. Nip was super cool. Right. Yeah, I mean, Nip is a good example, honestly, of just building that sort of long-term brand name as well. Like, his, It's going to live forever. He built things that were bigger than the music, and the music only helped yeah. support that. The music, he showed me the blueprint. Like, a lot of a lot of these dudes I, I watch, but it'd be hard to, um, to, to follow it because, like you just were saying, it'd be the older model. So, like, the way Nas did it, I can't do. Like, like I, that was a different era, you know what I mean? So... 
for this era and for the way things is moving, Nip laid the, he laid it down. He showed how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Be your own brand. Create something that's going to support everything else you're doing. You know what I mean? So his clothes was in his videos. You know what I mean? His music, everything, everything like was his brand. He, he knew how to work every everything, and it was all for him. Mm. And um, it's something that's gonna live forever. It's you know like, what I mean? There's a lot to be said for being like the definite, the definitive representation of an area, and just being like a cool motherfucker from that area. And Nip very much like for the past generation sort of represents what it is to be like a cool ass motivated rapper slash businessman and like you you very much have like a similar vibe for sort of like this is what like an uptown new york city right. dude is like right now right. you know we have a lot of examples from prior generations but you kind of sort of summarize that to a lot of people and that's sort of when we talk about this new model of a career that's like kind of what it's intent on is like building you up as like the definitive right version of that that's a fact um, so in, in terms of accepting the Method Man role, was, do you always knew that that was what you were applying for? Like it was never considered that you might be one of the other members? Nah, it was Meth. From, okay. Yeah, it was Meth off the rip. And, yeah. and did that just, like, what was it about him in general? Was it sort of the fact that you maybe have some kind of resemblance to him or, or was it just that I think, you were a fan? I think that played into the, the casting of it. They, that's what they was telling me that I resembled him. You know what I mean? But, uh. I always was a fan of meth, you know what I mean? And was crazy. I did I just did a film called Beats. Mm. Um, it was on Netflix with uh Anthony Anderson's in it, Dreezy's in it, a couple of different people. But uh Chris Robinson directed that joint and then he directed the uh the first episode for Wu Tang for mm. the for the American saga on Hulu. So he called me, he said, You wanna uh you wanna be Meth Man? Just it was like just like that. And I said, Hell yeah. I went I had to audition two times when did the auditions, killed those. Got the role, and then um, Eva, I, I, I can't remember exactly if I reached out to Meth or he reached out to me. But I went to Staten Island before we started filming and just vibed with Meth. He was I, just out there. Yeah. He, he does he stay out there some significant I mean, percentage of the time? I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> he was just there I, I, for the I, day. I, I don't know where Meth lives, <laughs> you know. But uh, he was. We, we linked up in Staten Island, where he's from. You know what I mean? And uh, we went over the script, uh, smoked, vibes, just chopped it up. You know what I mean? So you were on the ferry. And nah, I drove out there. Oh, okay. I, don't do, I don't do the ferry. You don't do the ferry. <laughs> See, I don't know if I, I ever do, drove I to Staten Island. I ain't do the ferry as a kid. I ain't doing this shit now. St no, the ferry is lit because the ferry used to be my default. Like if I had a girl in town, right. I'd be like, let's go to the, I'm going to show you the Statue of Liberty. Right. And the ferry is free. So oh, man. you do a good scene. Yeah, we ain't, I ain't, nah. That uh -uh. kills we'll like an hour the, plus. We're we doing the hood. Chicken, <laughs> chicken spot. You know what I mean? Nah, but you got girls visiting from out of town. Shit, that, that's cool. Though, chicken like, spot. When you're a rapper, you don't really have to take girls on some weird shit. <laughs> Shit to fill the day doing some sightseeing shit. I ain't never took a chick sightseeing, man. Not in New York. Worst. Like, I'm going to show you Times Square. And to me, it's like literally the most boring thing on earth. Like, there's the Sparrows, you the so Hard annoyed. Rock Cafe. I'd be so annoyed. Like, I'm really walking through Times Square with her right now. Man, that's such a rapper thing that you never really had to show a girl a good time. You just get to just. They and just you know come what? Over. Staten Island was always mad fall to me. Like, we used to meet. Oh, yeah. We would meet girls. Like on the deuce, like I'd be damn trying to meet chicks from Staten Island and would never go out there. Mm. And I mean, if they wasn't coming to Manhattan or coming to Queens, like never see you again. Staten Island is like the most underdog borough for sure. Like they're probably literally everybody who's hearing this who's from Staten Island is thinking like, wow, I can't believe they're talking about Staten Island this much. Nah, I ain't gonna front. I had a good time out there filming, and we was in the hood. Like that was my first time. Man, we was actually in they in Park Hill. Mm. We was actually in Stapleton. Like we was in they projects. So. That's what made it even doper. Like it wasn't like a green screen or a, a fake set. Like they really had us in the buildings where they where they was from. You know what I mean? So that just made it doper. The, the people that was from there was outside watching, showing love. So that was love. Do you Shout, feel shouts to Staten Island? Or, when you look at the current generation, though, do you feel like at all? You know, not happy with the fact that it feels like young the younger generation is really not that knowledgeable about the hip-hop legends any of that you know because uh, like when i think about the kids in staten island i'm just wondering i'm like i wonder to what extent they really have listened to wu-tang and understand now the kids now right? yeah yeah uh, i feel like you know it's, it's the times man you know the, the 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 music moves and you got kids being people people being born every day you know what i mean so you got those that uh a saluted forever and stand on it and know what it represented and know what it did, but you got those that don't know nothing about it 
and don't care nothing about it. It's, mm. it's, it's almost the equivalent of my mother or father trying to tell me about an artist in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was like probably that that was hot in the sixties. Like and you, in that, you could probably hear the songs and totally be like, "Yo, that's a dope song." That's dope but song, but you don't know about that. I life. don't know nothing no. about nothing. It don't move me. It don't. I don't care because that was way before anything I know. You know what I mean? I, so I understand the youth. You know what I mean? As far as that goes, but if you from any part of them eras, you know what I mean? That time you're supposed to salute, mm. salute that. You know, you know what they did. Yeah, it's crazy too because like there are projects from that time period that. It's like nowadays everything is just dropping, like, you know, your project is out, but there'll be right. some new project. Even for, you know, people that like that type of music and stuff, you know, give it a couple of weeks, there'll be some new album out that people will be talking about like crazy. And it just feels like that's why we have to be so obsessed with Illmatic and yeah. Reasonable Doubt and all these things is because we've listened to those projects hundreds and hundreds of times. And there probably might never be another project that we really listen to that much, especially with the way we listen to music now. Yeah, where right. It's not really like a strong reason to listen to the whole project the way through. And I realized that the fact that I still do that, mm -hmm. that I don't like it would be very foreign to me to put on the Davis Davies essentials. Right. I always go to play right. the album because right. I want to hear where you were at during that period of time. And that's why, honestly, that's why I did the type of album I did, because I know it's people that do that. You know, I don't I don't just conform to what's going on now or the trendy, like, you know what I mean? Like, all these playlists, I don't knock them because it's dope, but when I give you my body of work, I want you to go play that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, go sit with that, same way you would've went sat with a Jay-Z album or a Nas album, like, I feel like that's lost. Like, nobody do that no more. You might go to, uh, get somebody album and whatever singles they dropped off it, you go straight to them. Then you might check out other songs or know if or if you see somebody playing it on the on the Instagram story, what's that? That's one that out. Oh yeah, let me go check that out now. Like, but nobody is pressing play on the intro, sitting back, getting in the car, smoking up and doing whatever they're doing and letting it rock. You know what I mean? But I know there are a few people out here that still appreciate that. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted to do my project. And something that was going to knock from intro to outro. Ultimately, like that's the goal is to like make a project that's so cohesive that right. even the fans who are used to just listening to shit on YouTube or whatever will come to it and be able to really appreciate it. Yep, that's a fact. Yeah, that's a Snapple fact. <laughs>